I was just one in the in the in the, in the vehicle. Ni tulikuwa natembea na na mimi na yeye na driver all those years. Miaka kutoka na 86, na 87, na 88, na 89, 2000, 2001, 2002. Hiyo ni miaka saba. Tulikuwa in the same in the, in the same vehicle. So hapa hii tuliachana na yeye ni wakati tulikuwa tunakufa kwa ile shimo ya mashakos. Tuliaguka na tukiwa kwa gari moja ikuwa ni Range Rover KH 016G. Hiyo siku ni wakati wa campaign ya 2002. Tulikuwa tumetoka pale ya mashakos. At pale ya Kitui. Mwigi ya mimi mwigi. Tulilala kwa Dr. Musi kwa Dr. Musira. Nyumbani huko dia itu alikuwa ametualika. Tukalala kwake asubuhi tukaamkia. Tukakuja tukakuja Kitui akifanya tu campaign zake. Kufika karibu na mashakos stand off hapo dio kulikuwa kulikuwa na manyunyu kulikuwa na manyunyu watu wawili walikuwa wanapita kwa barabara hawa tu diwa obstruct there was no for for play when you are to be clear it was just a normal an accident like just like any other kwa sababu watu wawili walikuwa obstruct tuko wagoga kuagoga wakufa gari yetu ikafuka barabara bahati mzuri wakati tulifika kwa ile mabasa road hapo kwa sababu gari kilol hakuna hakuna mabasi ya kawaida ilikuwa inapita hapo So tukaenda pale ile tukawaka kigia stima tukafikiria pengine saa hiyo tume gari imesimama kufika kigi kafujika tukaingia kwa shimo kap tukiingia kwa shimo hata kabla tu hatujafika chini nikamsikia mzee akiniambia in my in my native language tulikuwa tumesema si tuogea hatuja yuogea naye kisugu ama kiswahili ni kuyu tu akaniambia woi wapo ni toa kuwa you know nikamwambia saa tutikwete nikamshika kushika tukaenda kwa ile shimo ndani kwenda kwa shimo da, kutoka hapo mimi nijisikia nikiwa nikaenda nikaenda unconscious so nikuja kujisikia nikiwa na robo hospital usiku kama saa sa, sa, 8 saa tisa huko ndio nikuja kurigin conscious ndezi yangu so nikasema nikabia nazi mwenye alikuwa na niagalia nikamwambia we madam na, naoba niona mzee wangu wako wapi kaniambia mzee ako hai nikamwambia no i want to see him hata kama sitaweza kutembea kindly leta 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 trolley unionyeshe diuni kubali dia unione kama ako hai So nasa hakunataka kuna kitu kingine akakuja wakanishukua wakaniwekea kwa trolley nikapelekwa paka kwa ile wada alikuwa nikaenda nikamuona nikamwambia habari sa nikaona nikaona amainua mkinini hivi kishwa mama Lucy alikuwa hapo kadwa kitanda akamuuliza na wewe umemjua eh huyu ni wewe ni ile kijana yetu wabogo sasa kutoka hapo nikarudishwa kwa wada nikiwa contented ya kwamba ako hai so baadaye akawa flown ngabo kutibiwa mimi nikabaki pale kwa Nairobi Hospital kama wiki mbili kutoka hapo sana nikatoka nikadena matibabu up to date, date. niko bado kwa matibabu alipokuwa kiongozi mm. ulimuona kwenye ile gari cha kusukumwa mm. ulipoona And the way he did it, he did it so well. He was so eloquent. I remember 1988, uh, he had gone to Karodhi Primary School. And there was a, a rally. And that time, I think he was a minister for, I think he was a vice president. And they were fighting him. They wanted to demote him. So they had picked on some politicians to ensure that he is undermined in each and every step, wherever he went. And he was there. And he did a speech, a speech that uh, was not received very well by the authorities. And then when they went to parliament, and there was already a group that had already been set out there to question Kibaki on the floor of the house, to explain what is it that you did, what is it that you said, what you are trying to, what, what you try to tell our people in Karodi, eh, borders on his incitement against our president. President Moy. Mm -hmm. And I remember very well he stood up. Nation reported very well. 
you know he had such a magnetic brain that uh, he repeated his speech verbatim what he said then the the nation brought out now the speech here plus what he said mm. and it was all verbatim yeah, it was all falling into place yes remember so 1974 there was also a report in the times of the, the of the of usa that kibaki would be one of the best leaders could make an impact in the world 1974 and then 1977 i see with this kind of profile he had so many enemies even during kenyatta's uh, president kenyatta's time jomo kenyatta's time also Moy's time they look around and saw a competitor who was so jealous and he knew that so he was normally very cautious wherever he went wherever he went that uh Mwai Kibaki, the late Mwai Kibaki, in 1988, thereabout, you know, we had um, an issue, a fallout with the president. And in 1992, uh, having been demoted from VP to a minister, late Mwai Kibaki did the unthinkable. He resigned from uh, Daniel Moy's government. Where were you and what was going it was, on? It was, it was around Christmas, yes? Yeah? It was around Christmas. And <laughs> we were in Buruburu. <laughs> yes. And so we had a party somewhere. And it was actually during Christmas festivities. And people got so excited. There was, we were in a club somewhere. We got so excited. We couldn't, we couldn't believe it. So after now the Christmas uh, festivities, we actually joined others to go and look around there. Eh? see what is happening see where the party is where the headquarters are so that we could also be part of the democratic party i was in buruburu and there was a lot of excitement in that club because i, I remember up to, to this day the my companions you know the way they were excited everybody was so excited mm -hmm. and then it was uh, also uh for the news news uh, the news the, the news anchor i think at ktn yes ros lucalo Lucalo. <laughs> she was actually picked, I think she was uh, sacked or something, but the president actually wanted to know why would you be sacked? Were you sacked because of me for the announcement that you made? And actually he, he, he surprised uh, Lucalo so much and that was the kind of man we are talking about, wanting to know why you have been sacked. Uh, were you sacked because of me? And it's like he was, he, he was telling her, in my government, you have some... ...pelekeo nyayo, lakini sasa hivi bila sani tuangalia tu maandalizi ya koje katika maeneo hao ya nyayo. Ndiyo piche za moja kwa moja, lulu tukiangalia jinsi ambabo shuguli naendelea katika uga wa nyayo. Na mdeo hali live mtazamaji picha hizi zinakujia moja kumoja kutoka uga wa nyayo kawaida. Kwa hivi sasa kama mnavona kwa mba wanaiza kukita hema... Uh, na pia baadhi ya viongozi wako katika uwanja huo wakikisha kwamba kila kitu kinaenda shwari. Na bila shaka ni shuhudi ambayo itakuwa inafuatiliwa kwa utaratibu kabisa na ni kwamba kama watu walivyoagizwa mida ya saa mbili asubuhi iwe kila mtu wa shaka ugani pale nyayo kwa sababu wataka kuhakikisha kwamba kila kitu kinakwenda kwa mujibu wa muda ambao wameweza kuupanga uh, na wanajeshi wanataka muda ni damu na heshima iweze kupewa kipaumbele ndio ile heshima na zile sifa ambazo tumemiminia rais wa tatu wa jamhuri ya Kenya ziambatane na jinsi ambavyo tutakuwa tunamwaga kabla uh, kuzikwa siku ya Ijumaa mosi kwa hivyo Rashid hapo kesho kutakuwa na siku refu kutoka ikulu ya Nairobi ikulu ya rais na kutakuwa na siku ndefu ama kwa hakika kutoka katika ikulu kuelekea moja kwa moja katika uga wa nyayo ambapo uh, wananchi ambao watakuwa wamefika katika uga wa nyayo watapata fursa ya kuangalia kinachoendelea na wengine watakuwa wanaangalia moja kwa moja uh, kupitia runinga uh, shughuli inavyoendelea kabla siku ya Jumamosi siku uh, ya mazishi na fikira sasa hivi Uh, lulu na muda sasa hivi wakuenda kuzumza na Hassan Mugambi. <laughs> <laughs> na mtazamaji kwa hivi sasa moja kwa moja tunaelekea kwa Hassan Mugambi. Hassan ndio mtaalamu wa masala ya mambo ya kijeshi. Anaelewa vyema taratibu za wanajeshi naona kidogo na tabasamu. Uh, Hassan Mugambi tuchureta sura kamili. Kesho watazamaji watarajie nini na ni nini haswa kinachoendelea kwa hivi sasa.
Na mkili ambacho kinaendelea kwa sasa ni uh, ule mwigo wa mambo yatakavyokuwa hapo kesho yani ile rehearsal uh, full dress rehearsal ambayo imefanyika hii leo tumeona maafisa wa usalama wakiwa wanatembea tu kuanzia ikulu hadi katika uga huu wa nyayo ambapo uh, matembezi hayo yatafanyika hapo kesho kwa mdundo uh, ambapo uh, mwili wa hayati mzee Kibaki utakuwa ni wenye kufika katika uga huu kuanzia ikulu ya rice hiyo inajulikana kama uh, the last salute ambapo atakuwa anaelekea kule uh, kuzuru tu yale makazi ambayo ndio ikulu ya rais ambapo yalikuwa makazi yake na ofisi yake rasmi alipokuwa akifanya kazi kwa miaka kumi kama rais wa taifa hili uh, kwa hiyo atakwenda pale na kuna maombi mafupi yatafanyika kabla ya kutoka kwa kutembea uh, wale ma, wanajeshi wa wanaanga wana maji na vile vile kabisa majeshi ya nchi kavu watakuwa wanyetembea uh, nje uh, hadi katika ni kilomita sita hizo za kutembea kuanzia ikulu hadi hapa katika uh, uga wa nyayo ambapo wataingia na kuendeleza shughuli ya uh, maombi hayo ya mwisho yake hapa jina Nairobi kabla ya kuelekea Odhaya lakini kile ambacho kimefanyika hii leo uh, ni uh, ule mwigo tu ambao umefanyika matembezi hayo yamefanyika muda mchache kutoka sasa na kama unaona ni kufika tu ndio wanafika na matembezi hayo yanapokuwa yanafanyika uh, Lulu na Rashid kule uh, kwenye studio ni kwamba Uh, maafisa wa polisi nao huku wanajeshi wakiwa wanatembea katikati ya barabara maafisa wa polisi wanakuwa wamepanga um, foleni kando ya barabara yenyewe na kupiga saluti wakati ambapo mwili ule utakuwa ni wenye kuwafikia uh, kuanzia wanajeshi uh, kuanzia maafisa wa polisi wa GSU ambao watakuwa ikuluni hadi maafisa wa polisi wa kawaida ambao watakuwa katika barabara hii kuanzia uh, processional way na barabara ya Kenyatta Avenue na vile vile kabisa barabara ya Uhuru Highway hadi hapa katika uga wa nyayo ambapo gwaride la heshima litakuwa lenye kuzunguka tena uh, mzunguko mmoja wa rais hapo kesho rais Uhuru Kenyatta siye atakuwa kuwa anafanya ule mzunguko wa kawaida ambao watu naona uh, katika siku za kuadhimisha siku za kitaifa ambapo yeye huja pale na kufanya mzunguko mmoja uh, huku wimbo kabla ya wimbo wa taifa kuchezwa uh, lakini hapo kesho itakuwa ni maiti ya mzee Kenya ya Kibaki ambayo itakuwa inafanya uh, uh, mzunguko huo na sio uh, rais Uhuru Kenyatta kwa hiyo mgeni wa heshima hapo kesho nie uh, ambaye ni mwenda zake ambaye atakuwa nakabidhiwa heshima kuu za kijeshi katika uga huu wa nyayo ambapo maombi hayo yatafanyika na vile vile kabisa uh, wale Ha, marais na vile vile kabisa mabaluzi na ha, watu wengine mashuhuri ambao wametoka katika mataifa mbali mbali kuja tu kuhudhuria watakuwa nyonyo kupewa fursa ya kuomboleza kwa mara nyingine tena kwa hiyo hapo kesho ha, rais uhuru kenyata atakuwa ni mwenye kutazama mwili wa kibaki mara mbili Uh, pale kwake uh, katika ikulu ya rais na vile vile kabisa ataanzisha shughuli hiyo uh, kabla ya marais wengine uh, watakao wamekuja kuomboleza na taifa hili la Kenya hapa katika uga huu wa nyayo. Kwa hiyo ni swala zima la kusubiria tu kuangalia taratibu hizo za kijeshi ambazo zitakuwa zinakuwa zenye ku uh, kucheza uh, miongoni ama mbele ya macho ya wa Kenya. Maafisa wa polisi wana jeshi na vile vile kabisa uh, sisi kama wana habari tutakuwa hapo kukujulisha yanayoendelea kujiri. Lulu. Na Hassan uh, labda watu wengi wanauliza ni wanajeshi gani watakao safirisha mwili huo na endapo itakuwa wametumia vigezo gani kuhakikisha wanajeshi aina fulani wanasafirisha wana mwili huu? Na kama kwa, kama e, hali ilivyokuwa kuanzia kufariki kwake hadi hii leo na hadi atakapozikwa kuna uh, kikosi speciali cha makanali ambao ni wanajeshi wa ngazi za juu ambao wanaongozwa na brigedia uh, ambaye ni jenerali wa nyota moja ambaye ndiyo anasimamia kile kikosi cha makanali ambao wanashughulikia swala zima la uh, uh, mwendo wa mwili wa hayati mzee Kibaki na watakuwa ni wenye kuwa hapo na kigezo ambacho kinatumiwa ni ule uh, ukuu wao katika 
jeshi ikilingadiwa kwamba uh, ni amiri jeshi mkuu wa wakati mmoja wa taifa hili ndiye ambaye amefariki kwa hiyo anakabidhiwa heshima na maafisa pia wa ngazi za juu wa madaraja za juu katika jeshi la taifa hili ni wanajeshi makanali ambao umetoka kutoka vitengo vyote vya jeshi jeshi la wanaanga jeshi la wanamaji na vile vile kabisa jeshi la nchi kavu kama tulivyoona pale wale wale ambao tumekuwa tukiwaona wakisimama pale kando ya mwili wake ambapo uh, wakati ambapo ilikuwa ina, uh, ina imelazwa pale bungeni wananchi wakiangalia ni wale wale ndio wanakuwa ni wenye ku uh, kufanya hivyo na wanaongezwa wanaongozwa na brigedia ambaye anajulikana kama Jeff Nyaga wakati mmoja alikuwa mkuu wa kikosi cha wana Kenya ama uh, majeshi ya Kenya yaliyoko katika taifa la Somalia brigedia huyo ndiye anaongoza kikosi hicho ambacho kimeteuliwa specially kwa shughuli hii uh, hadi pale ambapo atakuwa ni mwenye kuzikwa huko Odhaya siku ya Jumamosi na mash- 103 days with elections what should Kenyans focus on now what should be top of mind as they go to the polls effective leadership yeah. transformative leadership tested leadership yeah. record in terms of integrity yeah. in terms of trust in terms of in fact throughout Kenyans should be looking at examining looking at scrutinizing those who have offered themselves yeah. and put aside for a moment the political parties yeah. and look at the individuals that way we will no doubt yeah. have leadership that will emulate that will um, stand out uh, uh, on the same path as Kibaki uh, that we are now mourning uh, but also uh, paying tribute to yeah. I must say that of course uh, that we must have leaders who are bold firm and who are ready and willing to take tough decisions for this country kibaki came at a time when there was crying out for change and reforms and he did exactly that he created a secretariat in his office yeah. to spearhead uh, public service reforms he achieved much of that because he went beyond what anybody could imagine yeah. that he is restructured he shaped and streamlined systems and we take it for granted that things are working now efficiently but it was because of his bold leadership yeah um fearless and of course uh, professor kibwara has talked about tribalism yeah i happened to as, as i said you know observing him at cl- close quarters this is a man who you'd never hear him utter a word in his mother tongue in the public at least and i never did Yeah. and in each case he, you made sure each proposal brief or suggestion that you made it did not carry some those traits of um you know leaning towards his if you allow me a minute yeah. Trevor I'll tell you an incident that I that I, I still uh, stands out to me I was through his directive we brought out Uh, this economic uh, diplomacy issue yeah. he addressed ambassadors in his first when i was just appointed newly appointed and he told ambassadors i am the head of state you are going to be representing me as the head of state but more importantly i want all of you ambassadors to be salesmen for kenyan business and kenyan farmers yeah create opportunities seek advantages abroad mm. and bring investors to this country do not write briefs on political issues uh, that happen uh, wherever you are yeah. that was the beginning of what we now have as economic diplomacy which has taken a center stage in our in the conduct of our relations yeah. with other this was one of his very critical legacies and when i went to him and told him that we had managed to get one of the big uh, chain of supermarkets in the uk i think it was um, max and spencer to come to Kenya and pilot on Kenyan tea and ensure that each and every one of the, uh, the outlets would carry Kenyan tea yeah. and on a pilot uh, basis they wanted to come and partner with one of the factories that factory by some coincidence happened to have been in his own village yeah. and when he was very happy about the idea of 3000 outlets globally selling Kenyan tea but when the word was mentioned that the pilots 
factory will be in his Odaya constituency, very near his home. He said, no. How did you arrive at that? And I had no answer. Yeah. And the only thing he said, well, okay, have you authority and so on. And we had not because we were driving this as a foreign ministry yeah. and as part of our economic diplomacy. And that was the end of it. We never went to the Odaya factory. Yeah. And we had to go back to the drawing board. But the bottom line is, this is a man who wanted the shape, make up everything to reflect uh, the regional balance yeah. in appointments of ambassadors and high commissioners and so on and so forth. And many times he rejected people who went to him directly yeah. seeking, you know, those kind of uh, favors. Okay. Yeah. And that was, to me, the leadership yeah. that everybody should lo be looking at okay. uh, this time around during elections as we uh, reflect on the qualities yeah. that we need to seek out right. and identify. Is this the blemish on his leadership in 2007, 2008, and did he exemplify leadership in a time of crisis at that moment? I totally agree uh, with uh, you and with uh, Senator Matangi and uh, Governor Matangi in the making and Senator Fida. And also, I also went to University of Nairobi. I never had a chance to be taught by Governor Kibuda, but I read his Good. books. Yeah. Tremendous respect and congratulation and wish him the best uh, to be a, a senator. When I come from West Mugrango, I wish my candidate for MP position, Steve Mugaka, the best also to win for the West Mugrango MP seat. On this question, very many Kenyans are trying to get what I call a crisis identity to take advantage of Kibaki name and associate themselves with Kibaki. For example, the standard has disclosed the senator, the governor for Machakos, and uh, the, the candidate for ODM seat in Westlands, uh, Kisia, they have given some emotional outbursts on what really happened at KICC. It is very unfortunate. It is very unfortunate that uh, this is coming from people who were in positions of government. Twitter, PS, that time, still appears now, cannot start now giving out stories of information that came to his possession by virtue of his office. And, and this is a serious uh, indictment at uh, that public service, we are now getting people who are sitting in public service who do not understand how the code of secrecy and the oath, this information cannot be, be verified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The elections were declared a winner. The politics of the behind scenes of how we, this show is being managed by the producers behind is not for the public uh, domain. So I think that uh, we shall be demanding an apology from the governor of Machakos and uh, Kisia that such utterances are baseless. They are not anywhere. They simply want to get the people seeing that they were heroes. Remember, there is a battle between Ukambani. We started it with who becomes the governor, who becomes the deputy president, the running mate of Raila Odinga. Is it um, uh, Mutua, Governor Mutua? Is it Professor Governor Senator Kivuda? Is it uh, Governor Ngilu and the rest? That should not completely close, our, we close our eyes to what Kibaki did as a hero. All this, to me, is crisis taking advantage of the morning that we are mourning, yeah. people to be relevant. Of great importance is that Kibaki, for the first time, managed crisis, two crises that we very, very well. The first one, in 1974, yeah. there was a clamor to change the constitution because President, the late President Jomo Kenyatta was reaching his sunset years. There was a serious battle, yeah. and Kibaki and Njonjo the late were part of that battle. Kibaki, on one side, stood by the law and said, we cannot tribalize the politics of succession yeah. if Moi is Moi by law supposed to take power in the event of the death of the president within 90 days an election is done, that is the law. He stood firm and managed that crisis. The country was going to collapse. 
the Ngoropo that uh, people had started organizing themselves in uh, ragtag militias called Ngorokos and the others. 